Hey guys, Dr. Dex, or should I say Dr. Dox here. Today we're starting a new dock project and we're just finishing up our demo and getting all the old stuff out of the way so we can bring some new stuff in. So basically what we're doing is two eight by 20 foot docks and then a 14 by 14 out in the water. Uh, this side over here is gonna be attached to our concrete bulkhead area. And then there's gonna be two floats on that dock, three floats on the next one, and then four floats on the outside one, which we have all those materials here. So follow along if you like what you see today. Please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. All right, guys, let's check this out. So yesterday we built this patio cover. Uh, it's a fascia mount acrylic cover with a black aluminum frame. And so it's kind of a combination where we came in, did the cover, and then we're gonna build this dock set. So uh, this was a real quick and dirty one day deal. Really happy with the way it turned out. We did a fascia mount. So the hanging rail is fastened to all of the rafters of the house and then it's tucked underneath the roofing. We still have a little bit of gutter work to do, but I just have to find the right ends for the gutter and then we can get that buttoned up. Really nice cover. You can uh, check out our Instagram page as well and see a little bit more progress on that. If you're interested, it's made by a company called American Patio Covers Plus. <laughs> All right, so these are the floats for the dock. These will be sitting in the water, so they're called a roto mold, which I think when they make them, they spin them around or something like that, and they, they're foam filled, so they float, they're very buoyant. These will be underneath the framing of our docks. So we're getting ready to move these down to the shore. materials moved our trailers cleared we got most of the uh, demo done and now we are gonna start framing it's it's probably around 95 degrees Calvin I think it's 80 something 85 90 80 80 ish last time I checked okay Dustin is is taking a material dump run let's 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 re let's re say that so Dustin is uh, on his way to drop off demo materials to the dump so Nas and I are gonna start framing up our first dock section. So that's what we're doing now is we're kind of switching gears. We're gonna start uh, framing up this dock and see where we end up for the day. Uh, we do have to leave early today and I'm gonna wait on Studio Man to let me know what traffic's like because we're in a new location that's a little bit further away than uh, we're used to and the traffic with the military bases around here can get a little nutso. All right, so what I'm trying to do is we have a bad we have a bad beam that has about a foot of gnarliness to it, and I can't get it a replacement very quickly. I don't know if you guys know current lumber pricing and availability is really difficult to deal with nowadays. With the current world situation going on, uh, lumber prices have been astronomical. The quality's gone down, so we're going to cut a foot off of this beam, this first dock section. And I was doing a layout. So what I, my, my decking is five and a half inches and I'm putting a 3 16 inch gap in between each board. So I'd like to try to end on a full board. So mathematically that comes up to 227 and a half inches would get me almost full 19 feet. Plus in between the docks, the, the metal, there's three inches in between the connectors that I gotta calculate for as well because we are only allowed to go out, project so many feet from the bank. And we're maxing it out, 54 feet's our max. But if I make the decks full 20 feet, plus that extra three inches, I'm gonna be like over six inches past. So we don't wanna upset the homeowners association. So we're just gonna pull everything back a little bit since these beams aren't that great anyways. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna start cutting beams.
Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today, I want to go over what we've done this week on this dock. We're changing up our YouTube channel a little bit. We're going to do one weekly uh, build update only, and then we're going to focus on how-tos, tutorials, top fives, tool reviews, and things like that for our other two videos per week. We're going to still be launching three videos a week, but we feel like you guys appreciate some of the how-tos and the teachings more than you do the build updates. So we're going to make our build update one post per week, and we're gonna catch that like on the end of the week so we can get a lot of work done and then show you guys our progress for the week. So the last time you probably saw us, we may have just been building a simple frame. So let's get into this build and let's show you what we did. So here it is. We got it all floating, yeah, all right. So what we did was we started, these docks are all built with eight inch construction. So the beams are all four by eight, and there the perimeter of each dock is a four by eight square or rectangle. And then there's two by eight joists in between all of those. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology because it's a dock. I don't know if it's the same terminology as a deck, but that's how I know it. And that's how you probably know my terminology. So that's what I'm gonna use, okay? If somebody else wants to comment below, click subscribe first and then comment below about that, okay? All right, let's go check this out. All right, so first thing, the company that I bought all this hardware from is called Scott Co. Marine. Uh, the guy's name is Jay, and he hooked me up and gave me a really good price. As a matter of fact, I was short a few bolts. I had to go buy new bolts, and his price on the galvanized hardware was half that of Home Depot. Wow, half, half the cost of Home Depot. Okay, or pro build or any local lumber yard, anybody. It was it was really a great price. So that in itself, I, I almost wanted to wait, but I couldn't wait two days for the shipping. These people do expedite really good. So check out Scott Co Marine um, and see if they might be a fit for your next dock project. Okay. So as you can see, four by eight perimeter going around this dock. Okay. Once we had our four by eight perimeter installed. We installed these corner brackets and they're through bolts. So there's an outside bracket and an inside bracket to each corner of the dock. Probably the most important bracket on the dock. It holds everything together. Even in busier waters, I think it's a man-made lake, there's no power boats allowed on this lake. It's only pedal power boats and battery operated stuff. So you're not gonna see a huge wake on this dock, but we built this like commercial. We wanted to set an example of how to build a proper dock on this lake. And we're getting a lot of attention right now. So basically, we got the corners in place, okay? So once the corners are in place, we'll talk about the mounting hardware onto the bulkhead in a minute. But actually, this corner piece, it, it, it is systematic. So you have certain parts that you're gonna put on certain places so that you can connect to a bulkhead or you can connect docks to docks and we'll get we'll get into that in a minute but I'm just trying to explain to you what we used and how we did it so we have our frame together now we built on top of the floats once I had my frame figured out then I adjusted my floats and I made them square to the dock we squared up the dock we added the corners and then we put in the floats the floats were installed with galvanized four inch galvanized bolts lag bolts that went up through the float and into the four by eight, and that locked those together. Those also help keep things square while we finish building the frame of this dock. All right, so then I figured out our two by eight joist layout. They're about 15 and a quarter inches on center. And then we put in these angle brackets. Instead of using a joist hanger, there's this uh, three inch 90 degree L bracket. Again, everything is through bolted. All the carriage bolts have to be drilled through. We drilled hundreds of holes on this dock to put this thing together. Now on the back side of this L bracket, there's another double washer right here. So every single place that there's a bolt on this dock, there's a double washer, okay? So there's hardware going on the outside and on the inside of every joist and every beam. So once that's locked in and tightened, it stays, it's not going anywhere. So we pre-determined all of our elevations. I took a, a finish gun and I finish nailed all my joists to the proper heights before we bolted it together. Once the heights are figured out, you gotta kinda mess with the floats a little bit sometimes. Things can kinda get in your way and get a little funky, but we got it handled. Once the ends were done, then I took a two by eight 
here and the two by eight I, I clamped all these joists to the proper layout and then I went underneath the docks and I screwed up from the bottom some three inch three and a half inch uh, fasten master guard dog screws to hold everything in place took off the clamps and then I took and we installed we drilled all these holes and we installed all these 90s what's cool about these 90s not only does it hold everything together but it keeps your joists from doing this or this it keeps them pretty much at a 90 degree angle which is kind of nice we don't have to do a bunch of pressure blocking to try to make these things sturdy because i mean look at that it's pretty darn stout okay so then we had to drill all those out and bolt all those together and there's two locations on the 20 foot docks and there's one location on the 14 foot dock where that board goes through and holds everything together so basically that's how we assembled the dock and then we g-taped it now that's not a traditional dock thing to do but because i know about moisture and i know what moisture does to a deck i went ahead and g-taped it anyways i g and especially these plates these two by eight plates here if i wasn't going to g-tape anything else I would definitely g-tape those because that's where a lot of water is going to sit that would be your first piece that would decay in my opinion i could be wrong okay so now let's get into how we mounted this first section this first section was the trickiest section because we had to do some digging which kind of sucks if you go to my instagram page you can see some time lapses on on us doing that and there probably will be a time lapse about us digging and how we had to move some dirt to get this thing to fit properly so that it, would, it floats on that end. This lake changes elevation probably a foot to two feet between summer and winter. So that's why when we attach this to the bulkhead, we needed to have hinges. So each dock has the ability to raise and lower with the elevation of the water and not have any pinch points. So this concrete was a little brittle. I wasn't crazy about it. The hardware is great. Scott Co Marine sent us this bracketry. So they had done the layout for me. So all I had to do is look at the plan and go, okay, so this single bracket goes here, this double bracket goes there, and then we pin it together and we lock it in with a cotter pin and we're dialed. So the bulkhead has uh, two of those attached so that this whole dock can move up and down with the elevation of the water. Okay, so let's go out here. All right, so here's where the first set of docks connect. And so again, it's just basically all hardware driven with some pins. So the corners all fit together. As long as your dock sizes are right, you're not gonna have a problem just putting these things together. There's like a half inch of play or maybe three quarters of an inch of play back and forth. These are 12 inch floats and only three inches of the float is actually floating in the water. The other nine inches is sitting out of the water. Okay, let's go down to the next section. All right, so here's the second dock going to the third dock. Again, it's a corner piece that's pinned together here. And then there's a specialty set of hardware that we just had to measure out and lag through. Now, one of our joists was gonna be in the way, but with these three inch 90 degree brackets, everything still worked out really great. It's all attached, all framed up, all floating, and all ready for decking, which is what we're getting to do right now. We're getting ready to cut up all these deck boards and get them installed. We're going to use the Fasten Master stainless steel Cortex system. When I'm doing marine stuff, I like to use hot dip galvanized or stainless steel, and that's about it. I don't, I don't use carbon on the water. And then after that, once those do uh, the docks are skinned, then we got to wrap them with fascia. We have a ladder that we're installing on this far corner. You can see the extra blocking over here a couple of cleats and then we have to drive a couple of stakes into the lake bed just to keep this thing from moving around too much in inclement weather if it's really windy or something like that the old ones were a little too far this way so we cut those flush and capped them back off you can kind of see one right here so they're safe so anybody that decides to swim under here if they're so inclined won't hurt themselves impaling themselves on a stake or a bar or anything like that so so that's where we're at guys so far so far so good everything i'm really pleased with the way this turned out and it's just it's kind of like an erector set you just kind of assemble it all together put in your bolts and you're dialed and good to go so so i think uh, i'm gonna get dustin cutting some deck boards and we'll start installing some decking <laughs>
Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to give you an update on what we've got done this week. We have been able to get all of the rest of our dock boards laid down and installed uh, and everything has been cut to length and cortexed and plugged. So uh, it's a seamless looking fastener free top and basically uh, we also have on the two 8 by 20 foot docks the fascia boards installed as well which are TimberTech Azek seven and a quarter inch multi-width dark hickory boards really gives a nice look to the side of the dock and those are Cortex as well but before we put those on we had to put in some spacers okay because of all the hardware if you look down here you can see all the dock hardware and there's a lot of it and instead of notching around all of those parts we decided to overhang all of our decking a half an inch over the top of the frame and then we were able to put in spacers and I'll show you what those look like right now. Basically they're just inch and a half wide by six inches long pieces of PVC fascia board. So I was able to make enough spacers for this entire dock out of two five foot pieces of scrap fascia uh, that I had sitting in my boneyard and what happens is we'll, we'll break take these and they're at the right height and then we're gonna put them everywhere we want to put screws on this dock and what that does is it helps keep the fascia from wanting to bow in everywhere that we put in screws so we have to put in quite a few of these and if we have a spot that maybe is too wide then I have some thinner spacers as well but I'm pretty sure I have the right overhang for this last dock because I learned my lesson um, on the previous one basically once we get these four pieces of fascia hung on this dock all we have left to do is install a ladder and some cleats and then this project will be complete. There is one other thing that we have to do. I'll show you that real quick. We've got one of them installed. We'll come over here. To keep the dock from rocking back and forth, we drove some two inch schedule 40 pipe into the bed of the lake. And then we have a bracket that mounts to the side of the dock that kind of keeps everything from moving around too much in the wind. This isn't a really rough water type lake. Basically no motor powered uh, boats are allowed on it. It's all pedal power and paddle. So it's mostly kayaks and man powered type vehicles that are on this lake. The reason we leave these pipes tall is because this lake fluctuates in elevation by a couple feet. So even in the, the highest water level, the dock may be up into this height somewhere in here and there's still plenty of room where the dock can't come apart and float away or break off the bulkhead or whatever. We have it attached to the bulkhead as well, but uh, these are gonna be used just to keep the dock from moving around too much. So we have one more of these to install on the last dock after we get the fascia wrap done. So basically right now we're going to start installing the spacers and then once that's done, we'll start getting some measurements for the lengths of our fascia. Alright, all of our uh, decking is cut and sanded and filed and ready to go. So now I'm going to start cutting the fascia boards and we're going to start hanging those. So I'm getting ready to mount this uh, ladder on the end of the dock. I did some measuring and the bottom of this ladder is only four inches from the bottom of the lake. So 
if the leg drops another four inches, this thing's gonna be touching the ground and I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm gonna cut the first rung off of this. The old ladder only had three rises, so we're gonna make this one the same because I'm concerned about possibly the water level dropping some more and then this thing would be sitting on the lake and then the dock's gonna go like this and it's gonna break and we don't want all that. So I'm just gonna cut about 12 inches off the bottom of this ladder. All right guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw today, please don't forget to click subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when we're putting out new content. As always, like our videos and don't forget to leave a comment below so I can uh, reply as soon as I possibly have the time to do so. And get that bug off that lens. <laughs> All right, and uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you guys learned a little something about this dock project or if you have a dock to build in the near future, hope it helps you out in some way. And uh, as always, we really do appreciate if you'd click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.